Welcome back to Ray's Garage. I'm Ray Canelia. This is the assembly video of the new Northridge Tool 2x72 inch Mod E belt grinder. In my last video, you saw the unboxing. If you didn't see that, you can catch it here. Before we jump into the assembly, I wanted to point out a few key features of this very budget friendly grinder. If you remember in the unboxing, all of this quarter inch steel plate was covered in oil. The reason it's pickled in oil because this is all very clean bare steel. We all know bare steel rusts pretty quick. So they put a really nice pickle coat of oil on there. The reason these aren't painted is because it gives everyone the option of either powder coating, rattle can, spray gun, and you can make it whatever color you want. So not only does it cut down on costs, but it allows you the freedom of choice of color. All these steel components were cut out and holes punched on a high precision CNC laser. All of the aluminum components were done on a CNC lathe and CNC mill. I'd like to thank my friends over at Northridge Tool for providing this two horsepower motor, the VFD, and making the VFD housing. This is an iron horse, two horsepower, three phase, 56C face motor. If you don't know what 56C face or 56C frame is, it's a designation industry standard number for this bolt pattern and this nose diameter. All of Northridge Tools drive pulleys have a 5 8 bore for a 5 8 motor shaft and keyed of course. The VFD is a $60 eBay VFD which Northridge made this housing for it to keep dirt out of it. So the whole key behind this is budget friendly grinder and uh, I think Northridge hit a home run on it. So let's get into the assembly. Northridge supplies all the hardware to assemble this grinder. All of the hardware comes in individual bags depending on which part it's for. I unbagged them, laid them out. I made one substitution. They provide all these nylock nuts and I'm going to use regular ones because after I assemble it, run it, test it, I want to disassemble it and have it powder coat it. The only welding on this entire kit are the two screw certs that are tigged in here. Now we all know when you bolt something together you get no distortion. That is the whole reason behind no welded parts on this. Here's the main chassis, quarter inch thick plate.
We're going to install the brackets for the accessory arm. Notice how this is machined, and this is to accept an inch and a half accessory arm. Okay, here's the locking mechanism. The way this works is this one's threaded to accept this. And this one's a solid plate which is push which pushes up against your accessory arm. So that one goes on the inside, this one goes on the outside, just like that. Here's another shot at the accessory arm socket. I just want to leave a real slight gap here. If you make the platen too tight to the belt, it's going to make a lot of noise. So if you leave a little bit of an air gap there, it takes away a lot of the noise. One of the biggest problems with grinders are tracking issues. For a budget-friendly grinder, this has zero tracking issues. Check it out. Look how nice that is. I have a 60 grit Norton Blaze belt on here, piece of three quarter inch scrap steel. Let's put it to the test. That baby will cut. Let me demonstrate the accessory socket. This is just a piece of inch and a half square aluminum bar.
There you go. The new Mod E grinder kits are available now for immediate delivery for under 500 bucks to your door. I don't know if you've seen the price of metal and aluminum these days. The quality you're getting here, the perfect tracking mechanism, the machined pulleys and laser cut metal, you're going to be really hard pressed to build one of these for yourself for under $500. I wouldn't even attempt to build a 2 by 72 inch belt grinder when something like this is available. So in closing, I have to tell you, this definitely gets Ray's Garage stamp of approval and a big thumbs up. So until next time, see ya.